The design of the SAMPE trial um, is uh, quite novel, we believe. So when we set the trial up, there weren't very many studies running in newly diagnosed prostate cancer. So we had a look around and there were a number of agents we wanted to look at. So rather than simply picking a single agent to look at, we decided we'd pick multiple different agents and look at them both on their own and in combinations. And then the second innovation we put in the trial is that instead of having a phase two trial, stopping doing an analysis and then picking the interesting drugs and doing phase three trials, we combined the phase two and the phase three elements into a single trial. So for each arm we have interim analyses, we decide whether the arm carries on or stops. So we have a trial with multiple arms and multiple stages. It's, it's a novel design, it took a lot of setting up, but overall it needs fewer patients and less time to deliver the answers. The trial design we started with had five experimental arms with three different drugs, docetaxel, zoledronic acid and celecoxib uh, alone and in pairs. The celecoxib arms actually we stopped early because they didn't have enough activity. So the data we're presenting now is from the docetaxel and zoledronic acid arms, three arms, so each drug on its own and the two drugs together. The patients in the trial are newly diagnosed men starting long-term hormone therapy for the first time. The trial compares standard of care hormone therapy with standard of care plus something else, either docetaxel, zoledronic acid or the two together. What we found was that zoledronic acid had no impact on overall survival or minimal impact. Um, docetaxel on the other hand had a big impact on overall survival, it improved survival by about 25%. Within the trial we, we, we had planned analyses looking at non-metastatic on their own and metastatic on their own. The non-metastatic patients turned out to have done actually much better than we expected when we set the trial up in 2005. The main reason for this being that since then it's become established that these men should receive radiotherapy which roughly halves their risk of death from prostate cancer. So we, we can't really make very well powered statements about the M0 component of the trial. For the M1 patients we have sufficient events in that group on its own to do a separate analysis and so in that group we, we see the same effect of 25% survival improvement. In practice that means the median survival goes from 45 months in the control arm to 60 months in the docetaxel arm, so that's a 15 month improvement in median survival which is obviously a huge benefit. The second benefit we saw with it was that failure free survival goes up by about 40% and a, a further benefit from that is that symptomatic skeletal events are reduced by 40% consistently right across the, the follow up period all the way out to 7 or 8 years by giving those attacks at the beginning. So there's a big survival benefit, there's a benefit on failure free survival and there's a benefit on clinically very important events, symptomatic skeletal events driven by upfront use of what is actually a cheap drug. I think the key message is that for men with newly diagnosed metastatic disease, if they're fit for chemotherapy, they should be offered chemotherapy at the time of diagnosis, six cycles of docetaxel at standard dosage, we think should be now part of the standard of care for suitable men.